Hey guys, hey all. Um, I got a chance actually a while ago already, but of course couldn't talk about it, to drive the latest new steering wheel from Logitech, the Logitech Pro steering wheel. <laughs> and um, I have to say, I'm quite surprised. And I was initially when I got it too, but now that the latest drivers are on it, and I had to, or I was able to give it a go again. I thought now also that information is public. I can do my own little video. Uh, I have a desk mounted. Uh, that already been said. I don't have the pedals actually underneath me because my, my chair is moving and uh, I probably just push me away. And yeah, unmounting everything on the rig and putting the pedals on there is... Not really an option. So what I did is, and you'll see this later in more and more detail, is we do have the shifter here, but we also have a double clutch pedal system here. So on both sides, we have a little axis here that we can use, um, two, three centimeters of travel, something like that. And I'm using, and you can really calibrate it like that in the menu already as throttle and brake. So I'm using this for the few laps I'm doing later. And I can tell you by now that I'm fairly good with trail braking with my little left uh, finger. Anyway, uh, let's go through the whole thing um, in, in a kind of quick way, maybe. And let's start with the pedals, to be honest, which have a nice build quality, I have to say. Um, they're very easy to everything is rather easy to set up here that being said and uh even the dog couldn't really disturb me here uh finish is really nice um overall it has a lot of this um brushed aluminum uh, the cables can be nicely organized there's a slot on the left and right to uh, sort the cables and they have this little ruler on the bottom there uh, or bottom there so you can adjust your pedals left and right how you want them and actually remember the position now, just giving you a quick impression here on what the resistance is. Um, nothing yeah, extreme here or whatever. Everything as expected, really. And the brake ha is already uh, on a fair settings. But for both, uh, for all pedals, really, you get a small extra springs for the clutch and the throttle and a couple more rubbers for the brake and a nice little table to actually find out how much movement you're going to have depending on how you combine them. You always have to keep a foam in there because otherwise you can't really unmount them anymore. It always needs the foam to have a tiny amount of easy compression, so to say, which you can see here. Um, a bit difficult with one hand, but still works. Easy to get the cylinder out just by compressing it a tiny bit. And then you have to unscrew this, which uh, works a lot better if you use both hands, not just one. So here's a little cut. And then you have the cylinder free. It really only takes a couple seconds. Um, and then inside the cylinder, there's two rubbers and a foam. You just yeah shake it a bit and they will fall out and then you replace them with whatever you want. There is the load cell. In a real quick shot, not, not too much to see there. And this is after I've put in basically the hardest rubbers you can have with a harder foam. You get something like, well, the two centimeters of travel pretty much that they've been mentioning in the sheet there. Moving on to the base, I think you've seen uh, this elsewhere already and, and probably better quality. Um, it's fairly large. But I think it makes sense if you want a desk mounted, you just need the lever to really keep it stable, have through uh, three screws additionally to mount it. But you also have this clamp here, which has a nice cover initially, uh, which is quite easy to get out if you do it right. Then this pops out and you can put in to this slot the actual clamp if you want to mount it on your desk without any screws, which is this little thing. Um, it's extremely sturdy. I have to say, much more sturdy than I expected, given it's a direct drive wheel. Um, I didn't, wasn't really scared at all if that could break or whatever. It has a little rubber on both ends, so it doesn't uh, slide around. Everything is, sits really firm on the desk. Then we have the rim. We'll talk about that later a bit more. With the clutch pedals, the magnetic shifters, and the quick release on the back, which has absolutely zero play. The rim from the front. Um, ignore the little sticker there. Uh, then we have the rotaries 10, 12, 14 buttons, something like that. The only problem is if you spend so much time with it, you'll eventually get attacked by a jealous dog here. 
anyway, so I mounted everything to the desk in really quick fashion. Um, the rotaries, they have very little resistance. Um, you feel the tiny steps, definitely, but they have uh, very little resistance, so you can dial them really quickly and with your small finger probably they're both a button as well as i mentioned the clutch pedals are something like three centimeters of travel and the magnetic shifters have kind of a nice yeah a resistance maybe 300 400 grams or something not too much um, and with the rotaries as well you can control the small on-screen display there in the back which similar to the fanatec ones just allows you to pretty much dial in all the settings with the benefit there is a lot less settings and you get the newton meter numbers right away instead of having um, a percentage or so only two filter or dampener settings really you want them as low as possible i guess uh, the true force for me will speak later about this um, not a game changer and here you can adjust the left and right clutch pedal either to be a clutch handbrake whatever you want really and they can act as a combined clutch where you can Find the bite point if you just let go of one of the two pedals which is really nice there's a couple of leds on top that you can see which you can adjust how they interact with the game um and then you can just yeah kind of in this case choose if you want an xbox or pc very nice um you can choose what the display is actually showing can be something from the game can just be the torque meter like i have here it will go up to 11 when when you force it and then i think already we can we can get driving a bit um i chose the chevy here on olden olden because it has those uh, ridiculous bumps which is definitely what i wanted to test in this wheel and keep in mind i'm driving with my right left uh, right small finger as the throttle and my left small finger as the brake immediately you were able to see there the oversteer indication from the reel is immediate it's very noticeable um and i have to say i had very little issues um adapting from the vrs that i'm normally using to this one like this is literally maybe third fourth or fifth lap so that i'm doing with the wheel and i felt immediately comfortable with it um, maybe in particular because the 30 centimeter diameter of the rim is very similar to the one I'm using so there isn't too much adapting taking place and I think that's already the best message that during driving I didn't really think about the FFB I wasn't really searching for anything in there because I wasn't any there wasn't anything missing it was really similar to the VRS I'd say everything a tiny bit more damped not as harsh uh, not as crisp maybe but everything is there um, and obviously of course the 11 newton meter motor is not going to produce the same um, fierceness of a 20 newton meter base I guess that makes perfect sense but other than that I at least in ACC and I didn't get to test all the other games yet as ACC has good FFB, the FFB on the Logitech Direct Drive base turns out great as well. I think this is this is the most important information here. The force feedback is good. Uh, the amount of buttons you have on the rim is good. Um, I do definitely like the overall quality of it. The shifters have, as I said, a, a nice magnetic feel because they're magnetic and. The clutch pedals actually serve a good purpose here and it's not just because I was lazy to mount the pedals but thinking of probably a lot of there are there are a lot of people disabled people who are trying to do sim racing and they so far have to go for really um, custom or expensive solutions there aren't really as many uh, sip sims with with those clutch pedals for example and I find it a really nice option that they already included it to use them as uh, throttle and brake pedal and given that I was able to use it after a couple of minutes already I think it will come in really handy for people who need actually need such a solution so that comes in um, nicely again I don't think there is too much to say about it other than that there isn't much to say about it because when the reel feels so natural right out of the box then and you don't really have to think about it, then I think this is already the best argument 
or point about this wheel that you can have is that I can quickly adapt without thinking too much about it. I definitely remember that going to Fenatec, for example, I definitely had to dial in 10 different settings or so for it to actually feel or behave the way I wanted it. But here on the Logitech, you don't, A, you don't have that many options and it just feels correct right off the box with the only downside that not everything, again, it's not as crisp as the VRS base, but I'm also pretty much running it without any filters. So I'm just used to something entirely different, but you can feel every uh, tooth in, in the curb, so to say, you can feel every bump you get from the grass. You can feel when you come back onto the tarmac, there's a sharp edge the tire has to climb. And every little bump here on old, and we see this particularly on the exit here of the bank corner, on the short straight afterwards, you can just, just watch my hands, how they are thrown around by the wheel now, going over some bumps into the corner. And that is not even on a 100% of everything, right? The base is set to those 11 Newton meters, but in the game, I'm just using 75 or 80%. So there's even a little more to have, should I need or want that. Um, but I guess this was already Again, fairly easy to set up. Everything was there. Um, I don't really have any points against that wheel. And the price point, obviously, is something to talk about. But I think it's also a bit of a preference thing. Because with a big brand like Logitech, you definitely get the advantage of having a brand that can have good customer service worldwide and probably doesn't have too complicated processes compared to the smaller sim racing companies. So I think there is a huge value, not just in the wheel itself, but in what is attached to that in terms of service you can expect should you have actually issues with the wheel later down the line. Also the yeah, bigger amount of production they're going to have probably means they can um, work with other resources in those factories and in the end have better quality for a smaller price point and this quality aspect I think really kind of came across when I sat here with the wheel uh, and played around with it I have to say there's only a single thing uh, that I yeah consider something a tiny bit negative which is the rim is itself fairly stiff which is a good thing because then all the information from the motor gets directly transferred into your hands the issue i find though is that the material is not that soft and it's also a bit uh, slippery so if i'm driving this with my bare hands and i guess um after a while and if you're in an actual race you might get a tiny bit sweaty especially because the forces aren't not that small anymore you might get a bit sweaty hands i'm not the kind of guy uh, for that but if you are then i guess the wheel get even more slippery and you'll start to grab rather tight the issue is the material really doesn't give in a millimeter not at all it's completely firm um, and this is what i like so much about the custom rim that i'm currently using is that the t material you if you use your thumb you can actually press into the material like I don't know, three, four, maybe five millimeters or so, if you really press hard. The the point is it's a bit softer and your hands have it a bit easier to find the grip going a bit deeper into this material. So what I'm thinking is there will certainly be, given the quick release, there will sooner or later, that's just my assumption, there will sooner or later be replacement rims. And this would also be my suggestion to really look out for what's to come there um, because I do think the rim as it is now is not good enough for how good the base is. And you'll certainly get uh, blisters one way or another. You'll weigh your hands. You might get um, a bit of, um, yeah, kind of usage or over usage issues with your wrists, for example, because the, the forces are definitely enough to challenge you. But I think the, the rim, especially the, the way you grip it, it's also not that large, um, can pose a challenge to that. Might be preference, maybe gloves can already deal with that issue. But this is really the only downside I am able to find about this rim. Other than that, I would really say this is probably going to be a product that will grab a huge share of the market. 
because the overall quality is really good. Um, the feeling that I get from the game is exactly how I want it to be, even though not as crisp, not as sharp, not as large forces as you have with a more expensive direct drive wheel. But the overall package, I think, especially thinking about the customer server side of things, um, the, the flexibility you have mounting it to a desk, uh, potentially using on an Xbox or PlayStation, depending which version you get, I think makes it a really competitive product. And I have to say, I'm positively surprised by what uh, Logitech came with that. And I'm not just saying this because I'm going to plant affiliate links down in the description what wheel is available, but because I truly think this is a very good entry point for everyone who is a bit distant still to sim racing and who doesn't really have the time or a connection to go deep into the space and find out about all the brands that really only exist within the realms of sim racing and then finding that way that you now have with Logitech a very reliable brand you can trust that is able to deliver a sim racing product where I think you can drive surely on a competitive level with and I think this was something that was missing like a feel targeted on um, the broad range of consumers on uh, the mainstream of the market and getting something in return that will be enough for anything from beginner to casual to hobbyist to even professionals I'd say now the G2 guys don't have to hide anymore uh, the Logitech sponsorship they have because this wheel certainly is possible to be used in competition. Again, with the only thing it would be nice to have more rims, but looking at the quick release, which is a really nice mechanism, super easy, um, no play whatsoever, uh, indicates that we'll see more rims in the future. So I'm really looking forward to what Logitech still has in stock there, what partnerships they might have. McLaren comes to mind. And then I think we have a new player on the market here. Bye. Over the last couple of months, we've been developing our own telemetry software around ACC. It's called Popometer.io and it's geared towards everyone who seriously wants to improve their driving and lap times. We are working together with a lot of professional esports players and engineers on the game of ACC who are creating data packs that always includes a setup and telemetry data. This telemetry data then is visualized on our platform and very easy to access. You pretty much don't need to do anything. It's much easier than Motec, for example. And you can view side by side what the inputs are that you do and what the inputs are of a professional esports driver. Additionally, we have found a way to visualize the line, which makes it really easy to compare where you're placing the car and eventually where you are losing the time. So if you're a very determined sim racer who wants to improve their lap times, probably worth checking out popometer.io and give it a go.